to True Crime IRL. I'm your host, Kelly Barron's Brink. This is your Murder Minute. One murder in one tiny little minute. Let's go. Welcome to True Crime IRL. This is your Murder Minute. One murder in one minute. I'm Kelly Barron's Brink, and this is the story of Nanny Doss, the giggling <laughs> granny. <laughs> Four of her five husbands died from the poison she put in their food. Her first husband didn't die at her hands, but only because he said he left her because she scared him. Once caught, she seemed excited to spend the rest of her life in prison, and she often smiled and giggled when describing her crimes. <laughs> Oh wait, I also failed to mention that she not only killed four of her husbands, but she also killed two of her children, her sister, her mother, two grandsons, and a mother-in-law. <laughs> Oh, Nanny. Nanny Doss was also referred to as the Lonely Hearts Killer, the Black Widow, and Lady Bluebeard, and she was sentenced to life in prison. Nanny was spared the death penalty because she was a female, and she died from leukemia in the hospital at Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. <laughs> This has been your True Crime IRL Murder Minute. One murder in one minute. And I'm Kelly Barron's Brink. And that was the story of Nanny Doss, the giggling granny. Stay tuned for a future full episode about her. <laughs> Until next time, lock your doors, people. Even if the person on the other side of the door is giggling. <laughs> lock your doors. Bye-bye. Until next time, lock your doors, people. So easy, just lock up, just lock the door, lock up. Bye bye. In 1965, police found the emaciated body of 16-year-old Indianapolis resident Sylvia Likens. She was covered in cigarette burns and sprawled out on a filthy mattress in the home of 37-year-old Gertrude Banaszewski. According to Indianapolis Monthly, Sylvia and her sister Jenny boarded with Banaszewski because their parents were carnival workers and traveled a lot. The girl's father paid Banaszewski $20 a week in exchange for housing his daughters. If the money arrived late, Banaszewski took out her anger on the girls. Eventually, she focused her beatings on Sylvia alone. Banaszewski was the mother of seven children, all of whom lived in the house and partook in the violent and sadistic attacks against Sylvia. Neighborhood kids, some as young as 10 years old, were invited to join and watch. No one reported anything. Sylvia was beaten to death. Banaszewski apparently forced a neighbor to call the police and tell them Sylvia ran away. Welcome to True Crime IRL's Murder Minute. One murder in one minute. Hosted by Kelly Barron's Brink. Let's get down to it. This is the murder of Myrtle Cook. In September of 1925, Myrtle Cook was shot dead in her Vinton, Iowa home, a few days after publishing the names of suspected bootleggers. She was sitting in her window seat, rehearsing a speech, when an unknown assailant shot her through the heart, killing her within the hour. Cook was not a well-liked citizen and was a member of both the KKK and the Women's Christian Temperance Union, both organizations that supported prohibition. Cook's death to this day remains a mystery, though many think it was one of the bootleggers she exposed. Myrtle, you should have kept mum and you wouldn't have gotten murdered. And that's your Murder Minute on True Crime IRL, hosted by Kelly Barron's Brink. One murder in one minute. Have a great day, and lock your doors, people. Lock those doors. Your 
there's a beautiful brownstone brick home that blends in with all the others on West 10th Street in Greenwich Village. But the history that's taken place inside its walls is anything but beautiful. 22 people have died in the home, referred to as the House of Death, and a few of its tenants are said to still reside there in the afterlife. Several well-known names have dwelled at this residence, including Mark Twain, who is said to still haunt the building. Some pretty horrific things have happened here, including famous former attorney Joel Steinberg beat his partner, Hedda Nesbaum's six-year-old daughter to death in the house. Steinberg was convicted of first-degree manslaughter, but was out on parole in 2004. Besides this tragic death, the house was also the site of numerous suicides and other tragic and mysterious passings. I'm Kelly Barron's Brink, and this has been your Murder Minute, the death house of Greenwich Village. Are some houses just cursed? Or is this all one crazy bad coincidence? Welcome to True Crime IRL. This is the Murder Minute. One murder in one minute. And I'm your host, Kelly Barron's Brink. Rotten hell, you bastard. Those were the last words Lawrence Harris heard from family members of Kendra Suing, 10 years old, and Alicia Suing, 8 years old, as sheriff's deputies led him out of a packed courtroom, bound in chains, to serve two consecutive life sentences for the girls' murders. 25-year-old Lawrence Douglas Harris was described as a fantastic stepfather to his two stepdaughters. That is, until he began practicing witchcraft, and things got a little out of control. 32-year-old Marla Harris, the girl's mom, reported that her husband, Lawrence, described himself as a pagan, and he frequently practiced spells to keep people around him happy and healthy. She knew he was into some dark things, and she just asked him to keep it out of the house. Until one night he said he had been casting a spell that had gone bad, and that the spell could have had severe consequences. Mom, Marla, was at work while Lawrence was in charge of caring for the two girls. Harris stabbed and strangled the two young girls before setting the house on fire to cover up his crime. Hey Larry, guess what? You're not a witch or a warlock. You're just an idiot. And you give witchcraft a bad name. Sorry Larry, this spell was an epic failure. You'll have lots of time to practice in prison for the rest of your life. And that's your True Crime IRL Murder Minute. One murder in one quick little minute and i'm kelly barons brink stay tuned for a full episode coming out soon in just a few days but until then lock your doors people lock those doors Bye bye On October 9, 1960, Willard Woodring, 42 years old, owner and operator of a house of prostitution, commonly referred to as the Hawkeye Hotel, and Richard Buchanan, 49, a customer, were shot and killed during a robbery by a young male gunman in a black leather jacket who was accompanied by a young redhead in a lavender dress. Police immediately launched a three-state search for the man and the woman. They were thought to have been armed with an automatic pistol and they were driving with an Illinois license plate on their car. Police were satisfied that the motive was probably robbery, although $600 was found in one of the victim's pockets. Although there were several eyewitnesses of the killers and many reports of them being seen even after the murder, the murders of Willard Woodring and Richard Buchanan are still unsolved today and remain on Iowa's list of cold cases. From the 1980s until 1996, Herbert Baumeister would go to gay bars and pick up men and lure them back home to his indoor pool to kill them. The pool area was set up very strangely with a bunch of mannequins that looked like they were enjoying a pool party. 
Hey, I'm not kink shaming or anything. I mean, to each their own. But this guy was creepy as fuck. Just one look at his picture and you can see the murder vibes in his eyes. He strangled at least two dozen men, dumped many of their bodies along I-70 in Indiana, and buried several more on his own property. And like a true coward, he fled to Canada and committed suicide before he could be brought to trial. This has been your True Crime IRL Murder Minute. One murder in one minute, and I'm Kelly Barron's Brink. Until next time, lock your doors, people, and don't go home with weirdos. Conrad's Synthesim phone was only 14 years old when he met Jeffrey Dahmer at the Grand Avenue Mall. Like the others, Dahmer offered him money to come back to his apartment. In a video deposition for a civil suit filed later by Synthesim Phone's family against the city of Milwaukee, this is what Dahmer said happened next. He was, uh, he was on the couch. With his victim asleep, Dahmer went for a drink at a local bar. Did you arrive at a conclusion as to whether or not you had taken his life as a consequence of the drilling techniques? Okay. How do you know that? Because uh, he was uh, walking down. This is the true story behind the movie Stalking Laura and how she was stalked by a co-worker for over four years. Laura Black was 22 years old when she made the move from Virginia all the way to Sunnyvale, California in April of 1984. She had just landed her dream job as an engineer at a high-tech defense contractor called ESL. On her first day of work, she was given a tour of the building and was introduced to all of her new co-workers. This is when she met a man named Richard Wade Farley. He was a computer technician and had been working at ESL for over nine years. His co-workers describe him as quiet and shy, and they say he was just generally a nice guy. So Laura introduces herself to Richard and then just goes about her day, not really thinking anything else about him. But for Richard, it was a complete opposite. He says at the moment he met Laura, he immediately fell in love with her. A few days after settling into her new job, Laura went out to eat with a co-worker and with Richard. This was a friendly lunch, everyone paid for their own meal, and that was it. That was the only time that Laura Black had ever hung out with Richard Farley. Nine one one. What is your emergency? I just killed Emily. What's the knife? All of them. All three of them. What's your name? Michael Miller. This How? isn't a joke. I'm sorry. This isn't a joke. Okay. I'm not here right away because I am terrified. Are you sure they're not breathing? My son was. Where's your wife at? They're all here in the kitchen. I'm out here right away. Okay, you need to stay on the phone with me, okay? I'm on the phone. Just okay. stay on the phone with me. Your name is what again? Mike? Michael Miller. Michael, okay. Why? Have you been having some problems? I don't know if it did something, but I'm not myself. I, I am, I'm possessed. Where's your wife at in the kitchen? Is she on the floor? Is she on the floor. Chair? She's on the floor. Okay, what's her name? It's Young Miller. Have you been drinking tonight? No, I'm not. Okay. 